Good evening boys and girls and welcome back to our 2023 convention rebuttal. Today we're going to be reviewing the new JW soap opera and of course it's worse than you could ever imagine. Don't forget we're still doing the cringe challenge so if you cringe you lose and when you cringe let me know the exact moment you lost it. Are you ready? Let's get into it. But in this dramatization that we're going to look at, let's look at how a father helps his family to cultivate patience when preaching. Are these people still in the pandemic? Why are they writing letters? Hey, Gabe. Oh, hey, Olivia. How's it going? Uh, you know, it's going good. Just doing another letter writing territory, so you know how that is. A complete waste of time and paper. Okay, well. Hey, Gabe. Good to see you. Hey, Sue. It's good to see you, too. Is that Gabe? Oh, hey, baby. How's Bethel? Hey, Mom. It's busy, but great. I'm learning a lot. Oh, look who just got home from work. Hey, Gabe. Hey, Max. So, if it's possible, can you send me some more of my things? So just a bit of context in case you've been living under a rock. These new JW celebrities you see here have already starred in the previous convention in a series of videos which were both incredibly disturbing and hilarious. We saw Olivia being forced to throw away her pants because they were too colorful. I wish I was joking. I know, but it's all about good spiritual judgment. Do you think that these trends reflect Jehovah's view of respectable dress? I know that you'll do the right thing. We see Olivia's mom being scolded by her new husband for trying to take the lead in educating her own children. Okay, the point here is that when it comes- Honey, maybe an illustration would be better. Um, okay. And we saw both Olivia and her mom attempt to sugarcoat the archaic and homophobic stance in front of their mates. We believe that everyone should be treated fairly. Good. So, I assume you have gay members in your church? Mm, no, we don't. What the hell? As one of Jehovah's Witnesses, we believe everyone has a right to choose how they live. And I would never force my beliefs on anyone. Don't lie to me, Walt, you sussy baka. So now your favorite JW family is back and they're gonna teach us how to be an exemplary Jehovah's Witness. So Olivia, I thought that you enjoyed letter writing. I don't know. It just feels like another letter, another envelope, and another black hole. Finally, someone said it like it is. Black hole? Yeah, you know, stuff goes in, but nothing ever comes out of it. It's not that bad. What do you mean? You were just telling me that no one's responded to you. Okay. Yeah, I get a little antsy for replies. Like I texted my old classmate, Sarah, but she just hasn't said anything back to me yet. Maybe Sarah stumbled upon this channel and realized you're trying to recruit her into a cult. I just hope I didn't overdo it. What do you think? Is it too much? Yes, girl. Your text was longer than Mark Sanderson's grocery list. It's too much. I'm sure she'll, uh... What did he even say? I'm sure she'll, uh... I'm sure she'll get back to you. I think Dad just wants you to go to his room and watch some football. All right. Is everything on Gabe's list? Thank you. At least we'll have a little more room for uh, when your mom moves in. Yeah. The lore deepens. Anyway. What if we do something a little different for family worship this week? So this is where you and Gabe would fish, right? Yep. We learned a lot of lessons about fishing here. So lately, preachings felt like a black hole, right? Do they ever have a conversation that doesn't involve their religion? Jesus. We have the right equipment. If by right equipment you mean elementary level questions and answer booklets, uh, then yeah. But what does a fisherman need more than anything? 
Hmm, I don't know. Live bait? Second Corinthians 6 4. Just say the answer, dude. It says, but in every way we recommend ourselves as God's ministers by. Now, what does verse 6 say, Olivia? It says, by purity, by knowledge, by patience. Patience. It helps us to keep trying again and again to not give up. And we're not casting into a black hole, but into a blue sea full of deserving ones. You brought your family to a beautiful lake only to give them a shitty analogy? This illustration sucks. Dad here is comparing non-JWs to fish in the sea or lake, whatever. And, but the thing is, people are not fish. Fish are dumb. All you need to catch a fish is good bait and a little bit of patience. But people are much smarter than fish and they have the internet. And a quick Google search will tell them the truth about the Watchtower religion before you have a chance to indoctrinate them. I mean, just imagine if fish had access to the internet and learned all about the danger of fishing hooks. They would never fall for the bait again. All I know is Mr. Crab said, Patrick, don't do that! Cheesy. Well, maybe some would, but you get my point. Also, seeing people as fish to catch is kind of disturbing. I know it's found in the Bible, but that's just it. Now, maybe we can't see it, but Jehovah knows they're there. And it may take some time, but if we're patient together, we'll find them. I didn't make a single convert in my eight years of being a baptized publisher, and I tried. Believe me. Now, Irene's got some great ideas on how to make our letter writing more personal. The father kindly helped them to change their perspective, to see that a wasn't a big black, big black hole, but a deep blue sea. See, changing our perspective will help us to show patience. I mean, I think both analogies are off. I, I would compare the preaching work to trying to catch fish in a leaking boat. By the time you catch one fish, three others have already escaped. Also, my dude, you look tired as hell. I think you need some sleep. So in the following dramatization, let's note how a sister shows patience while teaching her Bible student. Already for section two, right? Guess so. Hey, this is the same girl that heard Olivia go on her homophobic rant at school. Hey, does the Bible really say all that? Yeah, it does. Okay, maybe you could show me sometime. Any reasonable person would have stayed the hell away from this religion after hearing that, but this is a watchtower fantasy we're dealing with, so of course the girl is now knee deep into her Bible study. Okay, well first, we'll see how false religion gets God totally wrong. Did you get a chance to study? Yeah, I, I read ahead. Okay, is, is everything okay? I'm fine, let's just um, get started. Okay, so um, then we'll watch a video on churches during World War II and why Jehovah will have no choice but to... Something's up. What's wrong? Um, I don't know, I just... I read that all religions are false. Well, yeah, but you have to remember that, like... I don't know, it's just... What? It's just all getting so... so serious. I think the word you were looking for is culty. Well, yeah, it's life and death. Why waste time on the study if she's not going to take it serious? I mean, Olivia is just repeating what Watchtower already instructed her, to drop any Bible studies who aren't making any progress. So you said all of that to her? No, just the well yeah part, but I wanted to. She used to be so excited for study. I don't know, maybe she's just not getting it. I think she is learning. Maybe it's just really sinking in. If it's sinking in, then what's the problem? Well, Olivia, maybe your student realized that she doesn't want to be dogmatic and dismiss literally all religions as false. Only 13 lessons into her study. Maybe it's me. 
And that line, my dear viewer, captured perfectly the burden of being one of Jehovah's Witnesses. Olivia never even considers that the dogma she is sharing with her friend could be insufficient or that her study booklets could be unconvincing or simply that her friend doesn't buy into her beliefs. Nah, all blame always falls back on the believer themselves. Olivia must be the flawed one. Olivia must be the one falling short of God's requests. You know what really helped me when I first started pioneering? I learned that Jesus had to be patient with his disciples. They weren't always ready to learn the things that he was teaching them. That means that we have to be patient with our Bible students too. I was thinking a lot about our study and I really wanted to know how, how you were feeling about it. As I was reading ahead, it finally hit me. All the churches in the world are lying my mom's included, and God's just going to destroy them all. You know, maybe I'm just not ready for some of this. Seems like a perfectly reasonable response, and she was very respectful as well. I understand where you're coming from. Give yourself some time to learn why Jehovah's ways are just. The better you get to know him, the more his teachings are going to touch your heart. Yeah, just wait till you get to the book of Joshua and Judges, and the rest of the Old Testament, and the New Testament. Trust me, I promise you it'll be worth the wait. Okay, yeah? Okay. Yep, this is such a watchtower way to address doubts. Oh, you think God is unfair because he's going to destroy all religions on earth? Nah, you just need to give it some time. Ignore all those nasty bits for now and focus on the pandas in paradise. It, it's gonna make sense later, I promise you, just focus on the pandas. So, let's get to know Jehovah better. Do you remember? Olivia used the Bible a total of zero times. This is just another Watchtower fantasy. In the following dramatization, a note how a sister shows patience when encouraging a fellow believer. This dude has a pretty nice voice, actually. He's just going to be working even more. I just don't know what to do about it because he's barely home as it is. Are you still listening to me? Mm-hmm. I just... I'm so tired. I don't have the support I need. You know? I know. And it never seems to end. I don't know why this keeps happening to me. I know it seems that way, but sometimes the decisions you make have consequences that don't go away. What an asshole. Excuse me? Not everyone is perfect like you. In your perfect life, Irene. I'm sorry. That's not what I meant. I, I don't have time for this. I'm sorry, that's not what I meant. Everything okay? Max just seems to materialize out of nowhere. Dora just hung up on me. Well, maybe she was just having a bad day. Every day is a bad day for Dora. It's not my fault that she married that guy from work. I just wish she would have listened. One thing Jehovah's Witnesses love to say is, I told you so. Irene was probably having a blast with that conversation. She has made some bad decisions, but that was years ago. Don't give up on her. I'm not giving up on her. I just need a break from her. I know this isn't easy, but Try and imagine what it must be like for her. Oh boy, are we about to see an overly gloomy snapshot of her life after marrying an unbeliever?
Yeah, no wonder her life is so sad. She's constantly being reminded how horrible the world is. Oh no, he grabbed the beer and laid down in his couch after a hard day of work. What a horrible piece of shit. Makes me think about First Thessalonians 5:11. This dude's only purpose is to bring up random Bible verses. It's like a robot. Keep encouraging one another and building one another up, just as you are in fact doing. We can do so much good when we're patient, just like Jehovah is with us. Hi, Irene. Hi, Dora. I was calling because I wanted to apologize for what I said. I'm sorry, too. I, um, I know that you're dealing with a lot right now. And I really do see how much you love Jehovah. I just want you to know I'm always here for you. Unless you stop believing, then you're dead to me. Th thanks, Irene. That really means a lot to me. You know, um, I was thinking about going out to service tomorrow. Would you like to go with me? I'd love to go. Great. I have this really cool new return visit. Her name is Peter. Yeah, because there's no better cure for a crumbling marriage than going out and bothering people at their doorstep. So, we already have this week's schedule. We just need to keep confirming with the speakers and quickly replacing any cancellations. That's pretty important. I can totally do that. I actually have some new ideas on how to handle that. Okay, good. Um, but a, a phone call should be fine. Don't worry. It's not that hard. I can handle it. Can I show you my idea on how to streamline the process? Oh no, a young mind with a better way of doing things. Watchtower is not gonna be pleased. More than a phone call? Yeah. The speaker isn't here. I'm sorry, what? Did you call and confirm like I asked you to? No. <laughs> but what can I do? Well, nothing now. I'll take care of it. Wayne forgot to confirm the speaker, so I have to give the talk now. Maybe Wayne is a PMO trying to sabotage the talks. That would be quite the plot twist. And it's not even that big of a deal. Anyone can give these talks. It's literally just reading from a script. <laughs> just feed the talk to an AI program and put it on speaker. It's gonna sound just as robotic as the usual elders. You did a nice job on your part. Thanks. Best life ever. I think Wayne just forgot. Hey Gabe. Hi mom. How you guys doing? Doing good. How are you? Good. I'm doing good. Um, I'm just checking on the things you were sending me. It was probably like a flashlight or something. Um, they haven't come in yet. Oh no, that's weird. That's my fault Gabe. I completely forgot to send it. I can't believe I missed that. Don't worry no, it's about not. It. I, you needed those things, okay? No, Max, it's, it's fine. Don't worry. I mean, everybody forgets things sometimes. Jehovah's Witnesses are really good at forgetting how many times they predicted Armageddon. And it's just one package. You and Mom already do so much for me, so don't worry. It's fine. Thanks. Thanks, Gabe. I'll get right on it. I gotta make a phone call. Okay. I'm sorry about the mix up. It's okay, Wayne. We all forget things sometimes. You know, I want to apologize myself. I didn't mean to lose my patience. I shouldn't have reacted like that at the Kingdom Hall. 
I'm sorry. I don't know about you guys, but did your elders ever apologize to you for anything? I, I was trying to recall at least one time where elders owned up to their mistakes, but I just couldn't come up with anything. If we, if we show a lack of patience, it's a good thing for us as elders to apologize. Wow, what an enthusiastic speaker. One sister had been blacking out and she was concerned about it, thought it might be serious. And so she went to the emergency room at a local hospital. Jesus, man, could you at least try to sound happy? That is why the kingdom of the heavens may be likened to a king Next. who wanted to settle accounts with his slaves. How can the fake beards keep getting worse? Jehovah inspired James to write, Man's anger does not bring about God's righteousness. This has to be by far one of the most dry, uninteresting, lifeless, monotone, depressing speakers I've ever seen in a propaganda piece. Now we get to enjoy a short clip from Stephen Lett, which I assume was filmed a couple of months ago before his face got all bloated and nasty. And he's gonna tell us why you should surrender two months of your life to attend the school for Kingdom Evangelizers. Since its inception in 2014, the School for Kingdom Evangelizers has accomplished much good in the worldwide field. Some might reason, I'm content where I am. I have a good job that supports my pioneering. I'm needed in the congregation. I could be sent anywhere. I hate moving. Or maybe, Stephen, they simply don't want to? I'm not smart enough. Well, can you relate to any of these feelings? The governing body understands. It's not easy to uproot oneself and venture into the unknown. But before you dismiss applying for SKE, there's a beautiful reason why you should consider it. This reeks of desperation. But now what is their sincere wish? They might want us not to become one of Jehovah's Witnesses because they have their own sincere religious beliefs or simply they have received the wrong information from the wrong people. Or maybe the family member just did a quick Google search and found out they're dealing with a high control religion. And this dude actually looks slick as hell. I'm digging his outfit. I think it matches really well with the gray, gloomy undertones of this entire convention. Mom, let me carry that. I got it, Irene. You know, I'm not that old. Woman, you got one foot in the grave already. I really like that doctor. What was he, 15? You know, he's not going to be practicing on me. Ooh, kinky. I'm going to keep packing your stuff, okay? Okay, dear. Irene, don't forget my therapy appointment on Wednesday morning. I can't on Wednesday. Let me ask Elena. What do you need, Irene? Hello to you, too. Mom needs you to take her to an appointment on Wednesday. No, I can't. Can you skip your preaching thing or whatever? I have to work at a real job. There's no way you're not going to take your mom to therapy because you want to knock on doors. What is this lunacy? I've had my hands full. I just need a little more help. Please. I'll see what I can do, but no promises. Look, I gotta go. Well, I can tell Elena's not gonna be much help, but I'll figure it out. You know, your sister had a tough year. You should study with her. Oh man, Akira was thinking that the grandma was the unbeliever, but she's the one who started this madness in the first place. You know, we have tried so many times. She doesn't want to study. I think you're just too hard on her, Irene. 
What do you mean? You failed to indoctrinate one of your daughters, and instead of respecting her beliefs, she's just another potential culprit to you? Such a JW moment. I swapped shifts so I could take mom on Wednesday. You owe me, little Miss Righteous. Maybe she would study. What, Elena? There's nothing I can do. Weren't you close growing up? Grandma thinks you can reach her heart. Yeah, well, Grandma also thinks she can live on her own. Okay. All these videos are so depressing. Damn. I know you tried, but just don't stop trying, okay? Okay. Never stop trying to drag your family members into your doomsday cult, even if they told you several times they're not interested. With all humility and mildness, with patience, putting up with one another in love. Thank you. No the best. What did I do wrong now? Nothing. I just wanted to say thank you. And? And how are you doing? I really miss talking to my little sister. No judgment? No judgment. Okay. I don't know if you know this, but I went to see mom the other day. I hate this last scene so much. Irene is trying to reconnect with her sister with the clear intention of trying to make her study the Bible. And, and we see that the sister was even a, a bit apprehensive, which implies that the relationship has been strained by Irene's constant judging. Now she gets all excited at the prospect of having a normal conversation with her sister without knowing that she's just a potential convert to her. This cult sucks. In the following dramatization, notice how a mate shows patience when difficulties arise. So this is your room here on the right. This is shit. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. welcome. We'll let you get settled in, okay? Love you, Grandma. So, do you want anything else? Irene, you know this is not what I wanted. Now I see who taught Irene to be an insufferable person. Mom, where is all my kitchen stuff? We organized and changed out some things. We? The girls and I did. You know, it's not your thing, Irene. We decided my stuff is better. You'll see. Oh, you don't like it when others dogmatically impose their opinions on you, huh? Hey, babe. Are you okay? Max. How many times have I asked you to take your shoes off at the door? Sorry, I keep forgetting. I was just making sure you were okay. Just clean, and it's like you don't even care about how hard I work. I guess Max is just gonna be roasted the entire show. Maybe he can learn how to be submissive to his wife. I'm not kidding you. Half of this episode is just awkward silence. I think the writers at Bethel were just like, ah, fuck it, we're gonna make this easy on ourselves today. Can you pass me the salt, please? Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. These need more than salt. Irene, why didn't you make these homemade? They are. I think they're great. Thanks. My dude just wanted to cheer you up, woman. Sorry about earlier. Yeah, me too. These past few months, I didn't expect them to be so hard. 
And I'm really sorry about what this is doing to us. We're in this together. You know, Jehovah sees everything you're doing for your mother. And he's so proud of you. Max apparently has direct communication with Big J. In fact, it says that married couples can be likened to a pair of scissors. Well, how so? Well, scissors are closely joined together, often moving in opposite directions, but then punishing anything that comes in between them. Are all these clowns salvaging their analogies from the same garbage bin? Now, in the following dramatization, notice how parents show patience with a daughter as she faces a test of faith. Oh, this is gonna be so cringe, I can feel it. Hey, thanks for getting me. Yeah, anytime. How was work? It was good. Thanks yeah, it was long. Hey, do you, do you know her? Hey. Oh, yeah. Hey. <laughs> Man, I'm so glad I caught you. So, uh, I wanted to get your phone number uh, just in case any work stuff comes up after hours, you know? Is that okay? Um, yeah, okay. It's 646-480-6649. Okay, I got it. If anything comes up, I'll be sure to give you a shout, all right? Okay, cool. Okay. See you tomorrow. All right, see you all. See you. Hey, uh, actually, I, um, I just, I was about to grab something to eat, and I wanted to see if you wanted to come with me. Um, no thanks. We've really got to get going. Next time for sure, then. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. What was that all about? It's nothing. I hope not. You hope not? Are you just praying that your sister gets no game? You're just jealous no one has asked you out. Trust me, it's nothing. This following clip is so awful. I'm just gonna play it out for you. I can guess who that is. Who's that? Just a doctor from work. Wow, he's persistent. He's persistent? Wait, is he interested in you? I guess. When were you gonna tell me about this? There's nothing to tell. You told him no, right? I haven't. I don't... Wait, you haven't told him no? No. Not yet. I've taught you better than that. You know you have to be firm from the start. It's not that simple. It is that simple. And you need to do it now. Why is everyone leaving? Max is just following his watchtower programming. Did he seriously expect him to have a reasonable reaction after constantly being told that having feelings for a worldly person could lead you to your spiritual death? Hey. I'm sorry. I overreacted. I want you to know I do trust you. Now he's gonna play good cop, bad cop. JW parents are just really good at it. I've never had a reason not to. I know. But I'm not a teenager anymore. You're not, but I'm always gonna be your dad. And dads worry about their kids. It's just part of the job. I love how Watchtower always describes parenting as a fucking job. Never as a relationship. I really need this job to pioneer. What if he doesn't take it well? That could happen. Yeah, if we're talking about a psychopath. But if you turn the dude down, he's probably just gonna be like, uh, alright, and move on with his life. But then you'll get to see what Jehovah will do. Absolutely nothing. I'll talk with him tomorrow. Is there anything I can do to help? Stay out of your daughter's business for once. Maybe say a prayer for me? I'd love to. That was a beautiful video. <laughs> you serious? In the following dramatization, 
Notice how a caregiver shows patience. I'm not taking those dirty peels. Mom, why do you have to make everything so hard? I'm sorry. Maybe it won't be so difficult for you when I'm gone. Such an uplifting program, guys. Psalm 7114 says, But as for me, I will continue to wait. When we're patient, good things happen. We preach. We help each other do what's right. We take care of the people we love. Yeah, unless they're disfellowshipped. Thank you, I just got back from service. Hey, Elena. Hey, what's going on? Well, I got this in the mail. Um, do you have time to talk? Sure. Because every single Watchtower fantasy has to end with someone being recruited, am I right? Why would the sister want to talk about the religion after receiving some letter in the mail? I'm sure she's already seen those familiar tracks before, you know, the ones with elementary grade questions. And all of a sudden she's gonna think to herself, oh, this might actually not be a cult. Yeah, Watchtower, whatever you say. I'm sure this is not the last time we're gonna see this JW celebrity family. Watchtower will probably milk them until they become too big and have to be replaced, just like happened with Jade and Nita. And the Saturday morning session is ended with the baptism talk from some dude we've never seen before. It's mostly the same rehashed baptism jargon we've heard a million times before, but I did catch a few nuggets of pure lunacy. Satan's world is filthy, spiritually speaking. Oh yeah, Satan, give me that dirty, dirty world of yours. <laughs> One thing that we must be very aware of in this world today that could tarnish us, could spot us, is the unclean and obscene speech of this world. Yeah, I've met more than a handful of JWs who cuss like sailors when they're with their friends. However, we must not let their conduct spot our Christian garments by imitating them. Now, Sister Edens, what pressure did you face shortly after your baptism? Well, I was baptized when I was young, and I faced the pressure to be popular and to be liked by other students at school. Satan saw this and he definitely capitalized on that desire. Unfortunately, this led me down the path of bad association and I began hanging out with the wrong crowd. Oh no, you made friends with your classmates. You horrible piece of shit. <laughs> oh, sorry, <clears throat> I cursed. Is Daddy Jehovah gonna be mad at me now? Mine was association with family. My wife and I moved back to our hometown specifically to be with family after living out of state for nine years. Shortly after arriving, we got baptized. And so being with such a large family in the area, there's a constant pressure, invitations to be with family. We loved our family, we spent time with them, but they're a little rowdy, so we had to limit our association with them. And that left a large void, and we were lonely at times. Hmm. Did everyone react the same? No, my dad was really upset. Um, being one of nine, the only time the family got together was the holidays. He put us all through Catholic school, and I became a witness, so he was ashamed. He told family and friends that I was a pretty rotten son for a while. Hmm. This cult just creates problems that shouldn't be there in the first place. And now, the two questions that will put some unfortunate souls under a contract with Watchtower for the rest of their lives. Have you repented of your sins, dedicated yourself to Jehovah, and accepted his way of salvation through Jesus Christ? Your answer, please. Yes. <laughs> How many people was that? It sounded like six in the entire auditorium. Do you understand that your baptism identifies you as one of Jehovah's Witnesses in association with Jehovah's organization? So we're not even mentioning the Holy Spirit anymore? Okay. Well, your clear, affirmative answers to these questions indicate that you are qualified for baptism as ordained ministers of Jehovah God. 
So let me know what you thought of this little soap opera in the comments below guys and please let me know the exact moment you lost the cringe challenge. I always get a kick out of your responses. I love making videos for you guys but editing this propaganda does take a lot of my time and energy. So if you're feeling good and would like to support my activism with a small donation, you can do so through the links below. And if you want to have early access to all my videos, please check me out on Patreon. It's only $1 a month and your support goes a long way. Thank you so much for watching guys. And don't forget to subscribe so you can catch the next part of the convention rebuttal. And you need to do it now. It's just gonna keep getting worse, believe me. Alright guys, I'll see you next time. Have a wonderful day and stay away from the tower. I'm not smart enough.